Hey guys, and welcome to the Series 27 Spring Event Quarter Buick, which is C600 Buicks, and you get a Corvette for your troubles. It's road racing, and yeah, well, hooray, wow, Plaza Circuit, we. Oh, and I'm not in the car noise, so I get to do all three. Oh, hilariousness. What would he do, though? Yes, yes, that's nice. Yeah. And why am I not in my car noise? Well, uh, because I've been in a coma for the last day and a half or so on painkillers. And well, I didn't want to ask everybody to wake up at fucking 2.15 a.m. on a uh, mm, Saturday. Yeah, let's go with that. Saturday. I think. All right. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Go on. C600 Buick, I mean, you have two choices, A or B, and, well, doesn't really, oh, piss off with the blocking, <sighs> okay, it's a very good thing that in motorsport they have um, made the AI, you know, Top of the line, six years of development, and I swear to God, you cannot tell the difference between them and the, these. They do the exact same thing. Under certain conditions, the lead car will just fuck off in the distance, and there's absolutely fuck all you can do about it. And they will gather in little lumps, and then, you know, number six will drop back, try to block it, number five will drop back. Meanwhile, out in front, the first two or three are just running away. Yeah. Does that sound vaguely familiar? Maybe like something I've mentioned before? Well, it's the exact same thing to do in motorsport. Quite hilarious, actually. exciting and very close racing. Uh, where the hell did the air go? Oh, there they are. All right, they have to bunch up. Yeah, sorry about that. No matter how long a race you do, eventually the AI will be at a set distance behind you, bunching up together. Even if you have one of those races where, say you did a 10 lap race of this, and you have one of them that just went miles ahead. Once you overtake that guy, it doesn't take long, and then he'll fall back and bunch up with the, with the other of the AI. And they'll be in, like, in a great big lump behind you. Can I just say, this, you know, American series, or whatever the hell you want to call it, has really taught me uh, about American cars. For instance, this week, where everything is C600, 
Um, yeah, I'm, I've learned so much. Instead of fixing the wrongs that is American cars, you know, lowering the weight, adding grip. Uh, no, no. We're really shown just how retarded they are to race. <sighs> and I'm just talking to keep myself awake, I think. If I start snoring, uh, somebody nudge me. And later, you get to do another event. Uh, no. Let's not get into that now, because I'm, I could have long, long speeches about that. Oh, isn't that remarkable? They all set the fastest lap on the last lap. It's weird. Yeah. It's almost like it was, you know, pre-planned. No, surely not. What? Did he... Fuck off if I'm going to drive there. You can suck my... Yeah, no. So in single player, I get to change my tune if I want to. Just go away with those numbers and just move on. Not that I want to, because well, appear this appears to be working fine. And I mean, it's not the greatest tune in the world. Mine never is, but gets the job done. He said before the very race where he lost dramatically, spectacular failure. Right, right. Anything else? Should I move out of the way? Oh, stop. Oh, get out of the way. And that little notch, yep. That cost me the slight advantage I had. And look at that. Getting up on a corner so we have... Suddenly everybody is filling all of the roads. So there's actually no room for you. And piss off. Grip beat speed. You really tell by the screeching when I hit the brake that the ABS is working fine. Well, at least I have brakes. Unlike in motorsport. And yeah, I should start doing some videos from motorsport as well. Just to showcase just how bad I am, actually am at racing. I mean, in these tracks, I'm pretty safe because while well, I've driven them a couple of hundred times, uh, in motorsport, well. for this corner. So you can hug the apex and not slam into the wall. Like, when this is used in the trial, 90% of the players in there will slam into the wall. That's just a fact.
Yay, next. <sighs> yeah, I feel weird. I'm sitting here next to an open window. It's minus, what is it, four degrees Celsius outside. I'm sweating like a pig. It, it's really scary. <sighs> Yeah, darks are good. Oh, I mean, bad. Mm -hmm. No, thank God for darks. So I wouldn't be doing this. I can guarantee you that. And I just know that afterwards, oh, there's going to be a price to pay. Ah, well, we'll cross that disaster when we get to it. Right. One of my favorite tracks, and that's not even a joke. For some reason or another, I'm, I consider myself pretty good at this track. And I kind of like it, but not C600. This is a B-class track. Oh, piss off! Oh. Is doing the best it can. how they made a V6 red line at 5,000 RPM, which is, yeah, nothing. This V6, right? It's not a straight six. No, it's a V6. And a V6, all V6s since the dawn of time needs to be whipped. They do not produce what they're supposed to unless you whip them. And I do mean whip it. So red line at 5,000 RPM is just... Yeah. I don't know. It seems low. Pixels have stopped moving fast. Now it's just this blur thing going on. Oh, mm -hmm. go on. I think I can. I think I can. Don't hit that wall, you retard. I would say this, though. It goes pretty deep into the red line before it changes gear on automatic. Which is nice. you would do that with every car. It certainly limit the advantage manual has on over revving.
there yet. Fantastic. Skip. Wow. A Corvette. Again. Oh my god. Oh. Anyway. Yes, yes. So, the car I was using was the 1987 Buick Regal GNX. And the tune I was using was in here somewhere. There we go. One six five five zero five five three eight. And remember, as always, if you use one of my tunes, please remember to like it. Same goes for the video, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Bye bye.